I'm Beanie, a human communications major and a full-time gamer and cosplayer. I'm interested in the ideas of feminist theory playing out in the cosplay community and trying to push for a more positive and empowering outlook. Cosplay gives everyone a chance to express themselves in many creative ways, but because it's based on characters and mediums that have a reputation for not representing the image of an everyday woman, I'm confused on whether cosplay is empowering or just reinforcing this objectifying view that only caters to the interests of their heterosexual male fan bases. There's a phrase, sex sells, and this is not to be underestimated within the world of comics, anime, and video games. Companies use this to promote the idea that if they offer more of the service, that their products will sell more or at least get people interested. This influences on how female characters are drawn. Female characters are often drawn with insensible outfits compared to their male counterparts, and fan service is purposely written in the plot. Because the costumes are based on characters drawn in comics and video games, I wonder if by cosplaying them, are we conforming to this idea of a sexualized standard? Are we saying it's okay to be objectified or is it empowering? More recently, along with the convention's code of conduct, they started to put up cosplay is not consent posters up. It made me wonder if reports of harassment happen more often at conventions because of rape culture mentality, the mindset of because they're wearing this, they're asking for it? Is it about being politically correct when a character is drawn with skimpy outfits and fighting in high heels? If a woman flaunts her curves to market herself, is that demeaning to other women? Are we undoing the work of feminism? Is there a need for a feminist movement? I'm hoping to find the answers to these questions by meeting with people within the community to see what their overall thoughts are. Yeah, let me know. Take a picture of me on the fender bowl. I don't think so because Sailor Moon is, you know, small, like average for an Asian woman. And, uh, um, but yes, most of them are the gamers. That's really uh, insulting. When you first start out, it's definitely very empowering because you are making this thing. You are making it your own. You're putting all of yourself into it. It's a very productive, creative process. But sometimes when, once you take it out and you're like wearing it around, you realize that maybe the costume itself is kind of objectifying because the character was drawn that way or they were created to be objectifiable. <laughs> you're created to be basically eye candy sometimes. Humans are male creators and they're used to thinking of women as, hey, they're a no commodity. There's something that I can use to sell to promote my product and the hotter and more desirable I make this character, the more my product will sell. And once that product ends up on shelves, ends up on television, Television, that's what we get to pull from when we're making our cosplays. So, like, we didn't choose to put Power Girls Boo in, but the artists did. But that's what we get to work with because of the, because of the artist's decision. I've definitely chosen the costumes that I wear based on how the characters are portrayed at that time. Like, I'm, I'm this Shikla instead of her normal costume because I wasn't comfortable wearing basically a bra of panties and like a sheer stomach piece to a con. It can be seen as objectification, but more often than not, it's kind of like, I can wear this and I can also stomp your face and if you touch me. The way they're dressed. Not to the extent that it used, not to the extent as, as, as generations go or decades ago. We see more female uh, comic book heroes, more female um, superheroes and action heroes and all sorts of genres. And I think it's absolutely fabulous that should be that there should be more female um, strong characters in in, 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 in that, not only in science fiction, but I think in life in general, that women, in, in, in media in general. Most of it is underrepresented. Females in the industry would change a little bit more because when guys design the game, they're just all boobs and butt and that's it. I see some people trying it, but you know, as long as they're comfortable and they're willing to wear it and it looks good, it looks good to make the costume. To me, as long as the costume, I can tell who they are, it's a great costume. Cool. If you can do it, then might as well. And if it makes you happy, then go ahead and do it as well, you know? It's your way of, it's your form of expression. You're 
you're free to do whatever you like. Figure. No combat character really ever will want like their breasts out and about. Like you have like ten vital organs in this area. Women know what's comfortable for them. What's comfortable when they're running around in heels and on a battlefield? No. Um, These are just like sensible things that come from living as a woman and experiencing life as a woman and knowing what works with your body and all your jiggly parts. Someone intelligent in more comic books, anime than just, you know, her face and body. Looking back, Street Fighter 2 being one of the more basic games, you have all your fighting games and whatnot, there was only like one female character you could play. Now you have plenty to choose from. So yes, I do believe that that has, along with the, comp the more mainstream female comic book characters, as well as, you know, the manga and the anime and the genre, have focused more towards the female. There's always been more males, but I think more females are starting to come out. More girlfriends. Somehow I convinced to go. Vengeance, I see all, I see female fans of every genre you can think of. Star Wars, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, um, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, you name it. And I think it's great that uh, that females really have a strong interest in, 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 the, in all these forms of entertainment that are being represented. That there should be more stronger and intelligent women represented. In the, the, the empowering part, it, it, when you have women on the writing staff, they can kind of keep that in check. Because it is okay to have a little bit of that, but it also has to be acknowledged. So when you have like a really powerful woman lead, like Rey in uh, the new Star Wars movie, like she's a badass, and she's not like wearing some objectifying thing. She's wearing like something that's like practical. So there, there is the aspect of like, you know, like, okay, this is why she's wearing that. Like maybe, I don't know, any superhero that's like a stripper or anything, but then it would make sense. Not yet. There's a scene where um, Charlotte says, uh, I'm sweating like a sinner in church, and she puts the tissues underneath her bra to make her feel. You know, only a woman would understand that it's something that, that a man just could not have done. Uh, he's not a woman. And vice versa. There are things that we don't understand that men do. So there's certain aspects of you'll see in a movie or whatever that they get because they're men. So it's a yin and yang, but what's nice is to have both. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. To my surprise, the majority of people I interviewed said the industry is progressively changing to accommodate its expanding fan base. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of eye candy, and with more women taking an active interest in the production, they can offer a different lens on female character portrayals. The importance is having equal representation and getting rid of gender roles. What once was a culture that subjects people, not just women, to an idea of how gender is supposed to look or act is making small but visible changes towards gender equality. There isn't a simple answer, and it raises even more questions. Do we want these fictional outlets to be more realistic? Isn't it fantasy for a reason? Would these products still sell if women were drawn normal? If an artist focuses on breasts, butt, and muscles, does it distract from a character's development? And is it considered a missed opportunity? Should an artist have a responsibility to change this portrayal? By opening up the discussion of these hard topics, it contributes to the growth and understanding within and around the community. Understanding that what a woman chooses to put on her body is her choice. And it's great to see the cosplay community heading towards gender neutrality and moreover, gender equality. Well, the streets are empty, that's where we run.